Welcome to the Fitpreneurs, the show that will help you flex your business muscles so you can make more money and live the life you really want. No more complaining, whining or being a wimp. It's time to pump up your fitness business and push yourself beyond your comfort zone so no girly men or lazy ladies allowed. It's time for me to do some push-ups and turn things over to your host, Simon Lovell. Hey, this is Simon Lovell and welcome to the latest episode of the Fitpreneurs podcast. And in this special series, I am interviewing six figure Fitpreneurs and I'm super excited by my very special guest who's here today. But before I introduce her, as always, head to iTunes, give a five star review if you're enjoying the episodes and also head to fitpreneurs.com where you can start your journey through the different stages to becoming a six figure Fitpreneur. And so excited by welcoming Claire Soboleski, how are you? I'm really, really good. Thank you for All having me. All the way me. from Australia. <laughs> um, why don't you share the story of how we first met? Okay. And then we'll go into your journey and, and teach cool. these valuable lessons uh, to everyone that's watching. Well, I think, Simon, it's actually nearly exactly two years, well, three years now since we've met. Um, so we were fortunate enough to be on a Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership event together. And it just so happened that we got randomly sat at the same table. And I was sitting next to Simon and we were chatting and I was like, you know, what do you do? And, you know, I was like inspired by Simon's story. and. Um, yeah, and it wasn't until I'd actually gotten home and I saw something pop up on Facebook that I went, you know what, maybe I do want to take my own journey into creating my own business. Yeah. And it just sparked a little idea in my head and I reached out and I think you were still jet lagged from your yep, trip back I was. from Monaco. I was. And uh, it was like 3 a.m. in the morning and it was 11 o'clock my time and we jumped on a call and yeah, I think we talked for like more than an hour and I was just like, yep, bring me on board. I think I really want to take my business to the next level. So, I mean, do you want me to tell them where I was at that time? Oh, well, I'm going to share first of all. Now, if you're watching, <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited because if you're watching this and you're female and you run a physio stroke PT business, this is going to be such a valuable episode for you because Claire, I mean, I have to say you have completely rocked over the past couple of years Thank and there's some you. key elements that I want to talk about. But yeah, share, share part of that story yeah. for you. So at the time when I was chatting with Simon, I was uh, a full-time physiotherapist. I worked at our local hospital and I taught some Pilates sessions on the side um, as part of a business and it's something that I'd always been passionate about like teaching people and, and coaching people from that point of view and I was probably making about $500 a month on the side doing that and it was something that I thought I really wanted to get into more of but I didn't really know how and that was probably the mindset and the, the stage I was at when I first touched base with you and then when we linked in I you know you explained how the model worked and what I needed to do from there and I was just like, okay, well, this obviously works. Let's just do it. So what was it? Six days after we chatted, I had $15,000 in my bank account. So literally... And that was from no Facebook ads or anything like yeah, that, right? No, this was from purely no. from your existing... Yeah, my contacts just on Facebook. Yeah. Local, you know, local Facebook pages for the town that I was living in. I live in a really small town. For those of you guys who think I live in a small town, it's not going to work for me. My town has less than 10,000 people. And I made that kind of money. Then. Did you, what was your belief system at the time? Because I know there's many people watching this going like, how is that actually possible? And now as you've ascended your income to 40,000 per month, okay? Yeah. People need to wrap their head around that. Yeah. How did you feel before that? And then as the start things, things started to move, how did your mindset start to shift? Because we need to really yeah. ground people in understanding that it's truly possible, but here's why. Okay, and I think that's probably one of the biggest things that that, um, that helped me was, I mean, for the 12 months prior to us meeting, I'd been going through, a, a, I guess, my own personal development journey through the Tony Robbins thing, and I'd been doing a lot of um, work on looking at my mindset, and I've got a great book for you know those people who really want to learn more about mindset, um, but just, just learning about how if you just apply some knowledge and apply some you know, basic principles, you just have to open up your mind to the possibility that, you know what, this does actually happen. This does actually work. You just have to be, you just happen to open your mind. You know, like that old saying, your mind only works, your mind's like a parachute, it only works if it's open. Mm. I think when we had that conversation, it was just, it was me going, coming from a place of, why not? Let's just give it a go. I just want to get this going and I just want to start it and you know, maybe this can happen and you know what? I'm going to make it happen. And I just didn't I didn't put any blockages. I didn't put any 
any limitations and I didn't put any rules around what was meant to happen. And I think that was probably the biggest thing that, that allowed that process and that change to occur was that I just didn't, I didn't have, oh, but what if this happens or what if that happens? There wasn't anything in the back of my mind. I just went, no, clear all that. Let's just do it. Let's just see what happens. And I think because my mind was so open to the possibility of what could happen, that's just, yeah, that's, it worked. Let's break down the steps of the actual model and really what you did to be able to generate that mm. first 15,000 yeah. and also then ascending to 40K a month. What have been the steps to get to that? Initially in the first week, two weeks, month, and then moving forward. Okay, so like literally when we first got together, I mean, we went through the program. I went through the online steps and I literally followed it step by step. So there was no, hey, I want to change this or I want to do a different approach. It was just this is what works, so I'm going to model exactly what works. And I think, you know, modeling things that are successful is a key thing. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. This is not something that you need to do. You just need to follow the model. So when I first started, I just literally followed the model. I, you know, it signed, you know, it was, I think, 12 people into my first group. And then I was like, wow, that, that just worked. Okay, great. I got that reinforcement of, well, that was brilliant. Let's just do that again. So I replicated that and I replicated that and I replicated So you that. went from doing one-to-one to group. So uh, I went, yeah. So it was literally, well, I was actually just doing group. I was actually just doing large group, casual people coming in as they needed to. And I went from that to semi-private training. I limited it to six people in a group. So I started off with just two groups and... A, not only did I get a great response from that, people love that, but also I think, and for those physios out there, this was a really key thing is that that is such a niche group of people that want to have a personal trainer, but also they've got some other stuff that need to be addressed or, or they want that addressed by a, a health professional as well. And that was the group that I was tapping into. And I had no idea how big this market was until I just opened it and the floodgates opened and it was, wow, these people are everywhere. Everyone needs or wants that reassurance of having a professional physiotherapist going, wow, this person is a health professional and they're doing my training for me. So this is great. So what did you create that was new and then what was the price point and, and, and how important was the confidence in you selling at that price point? So when, uh, that was probably one of the biggest challenges that I had was being able to sell myself at, um, I think, I mean, from memory, I think it was... Um, yeah, I was think it was thirteen hundred, thirteen hundred dollars Australian uh, for the program, or twelve nine seven, or whatever it was that I marketed at that time, and that was probably if there was any big challenge, that was probably my biggest challenge of of being able to sell it at this is what this is the value and this is why it's worth this much, and. I found that going through that process, again, following the model of digging for the pain and finding out from people, why have you not changed so far? What is it that's holding you back? This is- So it's next. introducing a new system that worked as absolutely. opposed to trying to do everything, like just trying to work it out on your own. Yeah, absolutely. And just following the model. And I mean, I remember making meticulous notes on the, you know, the, the program and the, the online training. I literally watched it. I think I watched it like three times just to make notes. This on is it. product mastery, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I just kept going over it and over it. Do I have everything? Okay, I wrote myself a little script. I had it in the, you know, to one side and it was part of my form that I had on my clipboard, but it was just making sure I went through all those questions and make sure I got like dug for the pain, make sure I really got to that person, found out what is it? What's their passion? What is it that they really want to get out of it? And just honing right in on that. What were your limiting beliefs at the time prior to coming in the, in the program of like what you could make, what you could earn and, and, and that, that kind of thing? I think as a, as a health professional, um, I, I can definitely attest to this being, you get into that profession because you really want to help people and you want to give the most. And I think inadvertently we create the mindset of, I'm not going to make money because I'm helping people with their health. This is not, I didn't get into this to help people. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't get into this to make money. I got into this to help people. And I think subconsciously, I had always been of the mindset of that's a real shame that I, you know, I love what I do. I'm so passionate about what I do and I, I would always want to be successful financially. But in the back of my mind, I was always like, well, in health, that's not a very money making business, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the biggest change that I've had of going, hey, you know what, you can go from, you know, have people's best interests and health at heart, but actually still making a really successful business out of that. Mm. That's that's probably, that's been huge for me. Now we were chatting over the past couple of days and one of the most important things that you said to me was, I made that initial surge of income, mm. but then I always ascended my income afterwards growing. And let's yeah. talk about the importance of that and the steps that then you put in where you were, get, you were doing 15K a month, 
20K a month, 25K, yeah, yeah. and then and like breaking through those yeah. challenges and moving yeah. into the mastermind and turning up to every single mastermind and yeah. learning and implementing. Yeah. And then what, what key, key things did you start to do to make sure that you were consistent? Yeah, so I think that's, I mean, that's, that's a really great point to make. Um, I think after we'd been together for about three months, and I was consistently making that 15K a month. And I was like, wow, this is awesome, excellent. Let's do it. I was being held accountable. The group calls were really excellent um, feedback for me. But I found that I was, even though I was still growing, there was like almost I could see the plateau in sight. So I was almost like, okay, where do I go now? Where do I go now? I, I'm reusing the model. The model's great. I can tweak it. I can increase it a little bit. But what's my next step? And I think that's when you approached me and you were like, Claire, you know what? I think we need to take it to the, you know, we need to take it to the Platinum Mastermind. That's what we need to get to the next step. And I think in combination with that, it was, it was just having those, I mean, you kept me accountable that whole time. It was like, Claire, what are we going to do? We need to get you to this point. What are the things that you need to do? And that's what I found really great about the, the very first mastermind event that we went to was that we literally went around the table and it was like, okay, this is what we're doing now. This is what we need to get to. What is it that you have to do between now and then? And having everybody go, Claire, you need to do this, this and this. I was like, wow, okay, cool. All right, I haven't thought about that. That's brilliant. I need to do that. Let's get that on board. And I think knowing that every single person there was holding me accountable, not just you, but it was everybody there, just kind of pushed me, it like clicked something in my mind and just went, I have to do this now because I'm going to be letting people down if I don't do this. What were the key changes that you made that enabled you to push through those blocks? Like what were the what were some really tough ones to break through? Was it the 20? Was it the yeah. 30? Oh, you Where know, you because we all stick at a certain level yeah. for a certain period and then yeah. we're like, "Oh, if I look back, that was the key change that I made to jump to the next level." Okay, there were two points for me. The first one was going from 15 to 25k, and it's it seems funny, but the big thing that was part of that was a key hire. And we talk about key hires like it is so critical to pick the right people around you to support you. At the right time. At the right time. And previous to that, I mean, we'd talked about having, you know, someone assisting you, administration, um, looking into you know, getting coaches on board, getting people to do sales, all that kind of thing. And I'd been like, yeah, yeah, but I'm doing so well. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing a really great job on my own. I don't want to. I don't want to outlay that money. What if I don't get it back? You know. What if I I'm spending all this money, but then I end up losing money, which is crazy because that's not really how it works at all. Because once you put it out there, it's just going to take you to that next level. Um, so my first key hire was hiring a virtual assistant, pretty much. So I mean, I've now gone from a virtual assistant to a actual flesh and blood assistant. But um, yeah, having a virtual assistant to just take on like the calls and the, like the basic stuff that I didn't need to worry my mind about. And so I was focused on the creative stuff that I was great about, speaking with clients, getting, developing my product, developing you know, the courses, the training. I mean, I was just always improving that, but that was probably a really big jump for me. That was probably 10K, just, you know, just over a couple of month period, just bringing that in. The second one was when I'd kind of gotten to 25, 30, and then getting up to 40. And that was my big key high was actually getting my, my proper assistant and being able to get an extra extra trainer in, getting bringing someone else on board, and that again was something that deep down in my gut I'd been, you know, yep, you need to bring someone else on, you need to do this, and being a physiotherapist because we're so specialised as well, I was a bit like, oh, but what if they're not great with the clients? You know, people people love um, me being involved with the sessions, and I think it was almost a bit of a selfish thing, like, oh, but if it's not me, people aren't going to love it as much. Well, no, you've just got to be really good at who you pick. You've got to pick someone that's good for the good, a good fit. And I mean, I got burnt. That was probably one of the other things that I brought a trainer on. And you know what? He didn't, um, you know, he didn't have the same passion that I had. Sure, he was great with the clients, but I went away for a little while and I guess I trusted him a little bit too early. And I came back and he'd actually taken some of my clients and had like moved on to make his own business. And that was that was really a huge setback. And there's a lot, of, but there's a lot of people who would have that experience and then they wouldn't hire again. How did how long did it take you to get over that and break through? That was probably a good six months. Yeah. And I knew um, after that happened, I felt I like almost withdrew. Like, oh my gosh, you know, okay, maybe I've been doing the wrong thing. What's I've got? I had the wrong approach. But then it was that encouragement and the mentorship from the mastermind that brought me out, it actually dragged me out of that. If I had not had that peer group to be able to hold me accountable and bring those, you know, really talk through those issues, I would I would still be back there. I would not have been able to pull myself out of that or it would have taken me a much longer period of time. And if I hadn't done that sooner, I wouldn't have been at 40K. Yeah, you know I mean? how, how important were the mastermind events, not in the fun and the experience, but in the, <laughs> in the pure, 
needing to go to actually realize like, okay, if I'm going to step away for a week and have this time off, I yeah. need to have systems in place when I'm yeah. away. That is probably the big thing. It's, it's, yeah, it's amazing to have such a great time, but having those systems of going, okay, if I'm not here, I need to have something in place for things to not fall on their face. And it's also a really good snapshot of, hey, what is the lifespan of my business and where is this going to be in, I don't know, five, ten years? I need to have a model or something to plan towards so that when I step away, it's still going to be running. And that is something that I guess a lot of new business people don't think about. They go, yeah, yeah, I love my business. I'm in it 100%. And, you know, you're giving 100% all the time, all day, every day. You know, we're pulling 12, 14 hour days. I know what that's like, but that is not something that we can do forever. You know, we want to at some point step away and have other people take things on. Mm. And that is, I guess, what I call putting your big girl pants on, you know, just going, okay, this is what, this is what has to happen for not only me personally, but also for, you know, for the future mm. of my business. Now you've gone from basically zero pretty much to a six figure trainer super fast. And now you're going to be set to go to a seven figure trainer, right? Yeah. And I want to talk about the money and the resistance and now what the financial side has enabled you to do because you're in within the charity things that you're doing, yeah. giving back and also for your personal life. How has that benefited you, the business and you? Because I know there's a lot of people who want it, but they're like, oh, like you talked about the money yeah. and stuff, yeah. but how has it really benefited you and given you more freedom? So, I mean, so one thing I didn't mention before actually, and just the, the, from a freedom point of view, when I first met you and when we first started getting, you know, getting the programs going, I was working full time. I had a full time job at the hospital. Okay. Six months later, I quit my job. I told them to gift it to somebody else. <laughs> and I started my own business full time. And so I went into having my own clinic and, you know, running my own training sessions and having like, you know, I've now actually just signed to have my own studio and my own clinic and everything else, which is... That's so this was without, thing. 40 came out without that? That was without that. That was, yeah. So it's just, you know, that was, that's just another level. I mean, what we were talking about before, having, you know, being able to step back when those times when we we're going to go to those mastermind events and being able to make sure that things are running while I'm not there, that's been not only essential for the business point of view and from a financial point of view to make sure that income stream and that revenue is coming in, but also personally to know that I can take time out for me and my relationships and me personally so that it's not going to require me being 100% in the business, you know, um, professional field and ignoring those other parts of your life because as you know one of my favorite quotes from Bridget Jones you know so as soon as one part of your life starts going spectacularly well something else falls on its face you know what I mean so from that point of view it's essential that you know you make sure that you're, you're keeping a balanced life which is why you know I love raving about RPM and Tony's program you know with making sure that you really incorporate all the different spheres of your life to make sure that you're living a balanced life so it's not all just about business it's making sure that you've got you know your own your own health your own spirituality your own you know relationships all that kind of stuff's in check as well and you've been able to fly business class you've been yeah. able to have like three events a year at the mastermind yeah. plus your yeah. additional holidays yeah. So pretty much from Thailand, our very first mastermind event, I made an internal promise to myself that I would no longer fly economy. And that wasn't being a snob, that was actually just holding myself to a high level and saying, right, I'm gonna make this happen. How many sales do I need to make this happen? And from that point of view, I've just been like, well, this is my new standard, bringing myself up, this is my new standard of living. Um, I mean, my partner and I, we're very, really fortunate to be able to you know, make some quite significant donations to our favorite charities and you know, we were able to take a month off last year to do a charity ride through Thailand. And I don't say that to impress people, but it's just to say that I could take a month off, my business didn't fall apart, and we were able to really do something that we felt passionate about, and we need to really, you know, go through from there. How, how important has been the, that, that peer group? Because here's the thing, there's business coaching and mentorship, but also how that's impacted, like, the balance in you personally you know, really helped, you know, because the, also the mastermind is about making sure that you're within a peer group that supports the personal side too, right? Yeah. And all the yeah. challenges that we have. Yeah. I think, I think being able to, some of the things that as a, as a, as a female and as a woman in business, it can be, well, maybe isolating isn't the right word, but sometimes you can feel, yeah, perhaps a little bit isolated, you know, um, certainly from other women saying oh you know you've got a business you must be really masculine and you know quite financially driven and all those kinds of things and it can be it can be challenging to have you know have still your normal relationships and and being able to 
you know, maintain your you know normal social sphere with that kind of thing. So having the the mastermind group and being able to meet other like-minded women i mean that's been that's been amazing as well just because you know you've got that support and being able to talk about issues and things that have come up and you know making amazing friends i mean i'm such great friends with everybody that's in the group um and just simply because we're we're so similar that we just you know we've got so many things in common and i you know we know that the, the five people we spend most time with we become and you know i just want to spend more and more time with these people because i you know I just love spending time with them, but also, you know, it, we, I get so much out of it personally as well as from a business point of view. What what number one or two key skills do you think that you've developed which have really helped your business? If you if there's anyone watching going, listen, these are a couple of the skills you have to learn to get to this level. Okay, number one, without a doubt, is is organisation and time management. And I don't mean that in a wow wow time management type of way. You need to really get on top of, you get into the office, You've got 25 emails, you've got your phone ringing, you've got Facebook, you know, social media posts going off. You, you know, you need to prioritize what comes first and also put time frames on that stuff. Because as I said before, if you just literally are putting out spot fires and reacting to what's, you know, you know, urgent but not necessarily important, you're going to be doing this all the time and you're going to be like, oh, shivers, it's like 8 o'clock at night. Oh, fire out. Oh, I missed dinner. Oh, okay. And I go home and I've got a really unhappy other half sitting at home. You know what I mean? So that is the big thing is making sure that, um, sure, there's going to be days where it's crazy. There are days that, you know, you're going for 14 hours. You know, we, it was like that the other day. We are up to, what, 1 a.m. trying to get yep. through some stuff. And we are like, shit, we need to go to bed. We need to be up early. And there's days it's going to be like that. But making sure that they're, you know, the exception, not the rule getting on top of your time and making sure that you really get on top of, um, you know, make sure you're organized and know where you, planning is really important too. So you don't come to a point and go, oh, shivers, I didn't realize that bill was going to be coming up or the rent for this or whatever. You need to forward plan all of that kind of thing. That's, again, I shamelessly plug up in because it's just, it's it's so fantastic. Mm. That's done such a great thing for my, mm -hmm. for my life. Um, number two, you know, I think, I think being able to spend quality time switched off from your business um i love my business i live for my business I, I you know i can't do enough for it but learning to be able to quarantine time away from that turn the phone off leave the phone at home um i'm not going to check my emails that's why i currently love flights because oh there's no well some flights are our wi-fi now but <laughs> I, I pretend there's not wi-fi <laughs> so i don't actually get you know, disturbed for that period of time, and it's actually it's really good mentally. Um, I mean, I've I've done I'm doing a lot more meditation and a lot more of that. I guess mental health work. Um, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of Headspace, and I do a, I do meditation every single morning now, and I feel that that gets me centered into the right kind of place. Sure, I still use the SOS every so often for my five minutes of everything's a meltdown, but you know that's becoming less frequent. So that I think. Having that balance in your life is really, really important, critical. Mm. Yeah. What about using video too? Well, what have I learned using video? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> that was probably something that I was terrified about doing when I first started, you know, when we first started working together. You're like, video is so important. It's it's such a critical part of, of really reaching out and connecting with people. And I was terrified of the, I was terrified of the camera. I would speak really quiet. I'd look down. I'd, you know, I would literally be shaking and sweating. And really, and I don't, looking back they were all unfounded things i think because it just i wasn't comfortable with and i hadn't done a lot of that work before um and while you know sure no no one's perfect but just that practice has just been huge mm. and has made a real difference i guess in my self-confidence as well when you first look at yourself on camera you go oh my gosh why do i sound so strange what's that accent <laughs> but you know it's something that that i think everybody gets once you once you do enough practice, it becomes natural and it actually becomes quite fun. Mm. Yeah. If you could go back to when you first started and you'd yep. be like, go and do this right now, you know, when you first started, what would it be? I think I would just accelerate everything that I'd done. I think I would actually just go, all right, get my key highs under wraps, um, get my get my program accelerated. Like, yeah, I would I would get people, on, get my support team on board. But in saying that though, I mean, I went through processes where Everyone goes through at their own speed to make those kinds of decisions. And I think it had to be a sequence of events that happened for me, my brain to make that realization and to switch. But if I could fast forward that, I would. What was your favorite mastermind event and why? Ooh, okay. 
I just think because you haven't missed one of them I in two years. One of them. It's all about priorities. Um, <laughs> no, it, no, honestly, like I, I, I say that jokingly, but it really is about priorities. When you when you make the commitment to be part of something, and you know that not being there has more implications, negative implications than good. Like, yeah, sure, I could I could save a few thousand dollars not on my air flight affairs. Not but it's one key conversation or contact. Exactly, is. and that has been this exact. I mean, okay, so for example, my favorite. Okay, so come back to your question. Sorry, my favorite mastermind event has to be Thailand. The very first one. I mean, we totally kicked ass in that pirate ship, right? That was that was that was epic. I think because it was my first exposure to working with other health professionals and other trainers and being like, oh my gosh, I feel that too. Oh my gosh, I do that too. Wow, 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 my kindred spirits, we're all kind of here, we all want the same kind of thing, like just connecting with everybody. And I feel that everybody that's come on board since then, their very first mastermind has been like that most of the time. Because They've been like, oh my gosh, I've connected all these people. Oh wow, I'm in my own group. I found my people. You and know? it's not about me. It's about learning from other people. It's Absolutely. like key conversations because yeah. you're picking up on yeah. like, everything that's working within so, an, another person's business. Yeah. And you take that and apply it to yourself. Exactly. And that's the power of masterminding. Yeah. And that's and that's not a bad thing. We encourage everybody to go, okay, this is working for me. Why don't you try that? And I mean, I'm like, here, this is what I'm doing. All open. It's not a competition. We're not in competition with each other. We're all, all over the world, you know? It's all about what works for me, how can I help you, and how can you help me? So it's all a bit of give and take. I mean, talking about key conversations, so the last mastermind, we met Greg Reed, and he handed me a book and said, Claire, you've got to read this book. And I'm like, okay, I've just been told by somebody that knows a thing or two, we need to read this book. So I re- went home and read this book, and I was totally inspired. It happened to be the book by Brian Smith, the, the other book guy, he's Australian. So I had a bit of a connection with that. And it just so happens that four days ago I met him and had a really great conversation with him and that kind of thing. That whole sequence would not have happened without that first triggering of a thought. And, you know, I mean, one of my favorite quotes now, which i just gotten from that book, from Brian, was it's not how big you are or how big your business is, it's how big you're perceived to be. Mm. And that is something huge and something key that, I've, that I now have forefront, right? I, I now think, oh my gosh, okay, it's not about oh, it's just me and I'm just a physio and I've just got one sidekick, you know. No, 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 no. You can, we're in a modern era where we can reach millions of people. It's not about what, how big my town is, how, you know, how many resources I've got because everything you need is within, you know, within grasp. It's mm. just what you do with those resources and how effectively you use them. Mm. So that's, that's a huge thing, yeah. What are some, uh, some things that... Uh anyone watching can do straight away like you could do, just do this straight away and it's going to have a big impact you know maybe it's overcoming a fear or taking a certain type of action what can someone do right now i think in as a specifically as a maybe a physio stroke pt and, okay and maybe getting great results with clients and actually i want to talk about that too which is uh, the impact that it's had on on your clients too and the people oh. that you're working with yeah okay so one thing that i could do <clears throat> The power of lists, I think, is really... That sounds really nerdy, doesn't it? But it's It's important. It's important. Um, And being really honest with yourself and writing down, you know what, if... if, What what am I scared of right now? And if you don't know, you know, what could it be if you did know? You know, doing the whole TR thing. And just writing down, okay, what are my biggest challenges? No, really, what are my biggest challenges? And writing that down and going, okay, how can I overcome that? And just getting real with yourself and maybe finding somebody... I mean, get, get a mentor, get somebody to speak to, to talk through that because things, we always make things more dramatic and more m- bigger and more negative in our minds than what they actually could be. What's the worst case scenario? Okay, well, what you think it is, could that really happen? Oh, okay, maybe not. So let's dial it down a little bit. Oh, okay, well, that's actually not so scary anymore. Oh, well, now that I'm not so scared about that, actually I can move forward in my business. And let's, let's talk about mindset because what I love about you, I, I call you kind of like the silent assassin. You'll come to a mastermind and then we won't hear from you in like a couple of months and then you're like, oh, I did an extra 20K this month, right? <laughs> so, how, so what are some of your like rituals, thought processes, like routines around keeping your head in the right place to be able to go and execute okay, and, and cool. take those, to the, those lists, prioritize and like move and taking responsibility? Yeah. Because and you're not someone who goes and shifts, go, moves into blame. You're, you just own it and you move. Yeah. So, okay, everyone get a piece of paper. You're going to write down the name of this book. It's called Mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K. 
amazing book. You must read that book, okay? It talks about, without going into too much of it, it talks about people in a fixed mindset and people that are in a growth mindset. And in reading this book, I was reading it going, oh my gosh, I was growing up in a fixed mindset thinking that, you know, this is the way it is. I'm always going to be like this. And my mental attitude is my mental attitude. This is how it is. Um, A growth mindset takes things like constructive feedback and and criticism um, and things not working out and failure per se and going, okay, great. How can I learn from this? And so I think in reading that book, it opened my eyes to, okay, well, not everything that happens in my life is a personal attack on me. Let's not take that personally. It is actually just demonstrating to me, okay, that didn't work, but you know what? That means that next time we have a shot at making this better. And I think that's probably one of the big things from the masterminds is that being a sponge and just absorbing all that new information and that knowledge and then going through and just trial and error. Okay, I tried that. Oh, okay, that didn't work out so well. Okay, let's try this now. Okay, instead of going, oh, that didn't work. Oh, well, I better not try anymore. A bit like the trainer, you know. Um, you know, he came in, this obviously didn't work to my financial detriment, but you know what? Okay, let's try it again. And I've now got, I've now got a physio that works with me and she's amazing and she's incredible. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I could, if she, only she'd been here 12 months earlier, you know, crystal ball as if we know that. <laughs> but, you know, it's just getting into that mindset of it might not work, but then we've just got something else to try. And then we're going to try something else. And being flexible and being able to say, I, I trust in myself enough. I trust my own confidence, my own ability enough to be able to move forward with that. Um, and a big thing that's helped me as, as well is, as you said, like getting in the right headspace. I used to kind of become quite flighty with, oh my gosh, I've got all this stuff. I get into overwhelm. I feel like I'm falling over the edge. Oh my goodness, all these things I need to do. Like now, 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 now. That was not serving me. And so I, I, I came to realize that, that, you know, I guess my little moments of anxiety were almost to my own detriment, like quite significantly, not only financially, but in my business and how I was feeling as a person. I felt really quite anxious with a knot in my stomach like a lot of the time. That is not good for you physiologically, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah. So looking after your own health is is massive. I now, mandatory, I must work out for an hour a day. That is, that is something that, you know, okay, maybe it's not an hour, but I have to do a workout of some kind because your own physical health and so many trainers, I mean, we've had this conversation so many times, so many trainers neglect themselves. Oh, my business is going so great, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get people in this time, that time, 14 hours. Oh, I don't have time to work out. No, 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 no. Scrap that. You need to find time for you, for your physical health, but also for your mental health. Um, and I mentioned before Headspace. Like I use Headspace. It's 10 minutes of meditation. Everybody's got 10 minutes. First thing in the morning when I wake Absolutely. up, 10 minutes. Focusing on your breathing, focusing on you know, centering your mind and it it talks you through. It's not just a blank where your mind wanders and you kind of, oh yeah, I'm meant to be meditating. Oh, shit, as I was thinking about my figures for this month, you know. Having something to center you and to just take you away completely mentally for to start off your day is essential. And then having something to go to to center you to be able to access at any time during the day. Again, like I said, I'd said, I use the SOS. They're like three minutes, I think. If I'm feeling a bit like, oh, shivers, the phone's been ringing, that email, I need to answer that, I need to do this. Okay, stop. Reset. Anyone can find, even if you go to the bathroom, like go into the bathroom and you've got your phone or wherever it might be and you take three minutes and you just put your headphones in, whatever it is, reset. Okay, now I can face the day. Things are not as bad as what they were five minutes ago when I started freaking out. Mm. That's that's a big thing for me. That's made a big difference. Mm. Yeah. Was there a time when you had kind of a big fear of failure or anything like that? Or have you, have you never really had that? I think I've just, I mean, previously to us working together, I mean, I'd always had the thought that I would love to have my own business and I'd love to do that. But I was in a fixed mindset of, well, that's not something I could do. So I'm not going to try because if I try, I'll fail. And if I fail, then, you know, my life is over. <laughs> to be dramatic. But, you know, I would never try things because I was literally... I was like, well, that if, if I can see that potentially couldn't work out, I won't even try. That was a typical fixed mindset that I had. So it wasn't until I opened my mind to the possibility of, hey, this could actually work. And I think it was all that personal development stuff that I did with Tony and um, through that, that year of growth, or to that two years of growth that I had that really started me transitioning into that growth mindset of, hey, what if I could and what if I could actually try that? And if I did try that, it could actually open up so many more possibilities. And, you know, here I am now. Like, wouldn't even look back. Wouldn't mm. even look back. Mm. You know, people say to me, like, oh, do you, you know, do you miss that? And I'm like, well, 
I don't miss it, but also it's not that I didn't appreciate it at the time. I, I really enjoyed my job at the time, but now I'm doing so much more fun stuff. I mean, I come overseas and visit with a group of people three times a year. I'd go holidaying. I mean, my goal was once I'd love to go on an international trip once a year. I now am lucky enough to do that four or five times a year. Like that's just that's just something that's it's my new standard, and I just and I'm so grateful, and I I absolutely love the fact that I can do that. Awesome. Yeah. Thank so, you, Claire. Oh, thank you. What's your favorite quote? Oh, okay. Um, so the one that I mentioned before from Brian Smith, the one about you know how big it's not how big you are, it's how big you perceive to be. That's probably one of them. But one of my one of my personal quotes, which is actually the tagline for my business, is "Be your own hero." I nice. think that's probably something that I live by personally, but I also encourage and empower all my clients to live by as well and my trainers. So, you know, it's not about relying on other people. It's, you know, being a hero to yourself, not only within your own mind, but physically and in your whole life. So ask yourself, what's your next power move going to be? Head to fitpreneurs.com, uh, apply for the free call. Make sure you watch the webinar on the specific steps on moving yourself towards and ascending through the different stages to become a six-figure fitpreneur. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Awesome stuff. And maybe we'll see you at a future mastermind. Uh, as always, head to iTunes, uh, give us a review, connect with us on the different social media channels, and I'll see you in another episode of The Fitpreneurs. Take it easy. Guys, thanks for the killer episode. Listen, if you want to take your fitness business to the next level, terminate your competition, create ultimate freedom, buy new houses, cars, which could blow up, travel the world, or open your own gym where you can lift really heavy weights, then head to www.thefitpreneurs.com slash free call for details on how to apply for your free accelerator call. Until the next episode, hasta la vista, fit pros.